Hi, everybody. I just had a phenomenal time with Nemo over Zoom and uh, recorded it. Want to get the highlights to you. It went very long. So on a one to ten, what would you give it? Ah, for this one, I really enjoyed, so I'll give it a nine. <laughs> Let me give you the big picture here. This was a phase two teaching in one of the three churches that Nemo is focusing on. She was there about six months ago and did phase one. Word was getting out about the truth of what was being taught and lives are being changed. Usually in our phase two teaching, we expect a smaller amount of the original people trained. So the first time they had about 40 or 50, so she was expecting about 20. Well. 40 people came, but 20 of them were new because they'd heard the truth and they wanted to hear more. So they had to readjust and train these 20 new people. I love the way that they did it. Wow. So so half of the time. people came had not been trained. Yeah. Did that slow you down? Not really, because uh, we had the ones who had come for phase one, take them through uh the what we had gone through during phase one and they still got it they use a story from second kings chapter five about elisha's servant who got greedy and they saw how it applied to themselves and yeah. did those did those who trained them in phase one find it helpful for them mm -hmm. because they especially when we looked at the story of gehazi i had never looked at it that way and they were like, this guy was hot-tempered. <laughs> I have read it, <laughs> but I had never seen it that way. Because he was saying, he's hot-tempered. How can he cast the whole generation of girls just because of one man's mistake? They were like, oh, that was too harsh. I was like, oh, I had never looked at it that way. Now, what verse are we referencing? Uh, Second Kings from chapter 5, from verse 22 to 33, I think. Right. Yeah. What did Gehazi yeah. say? I, I, yeah, I know the whole story and text. What, what? Not, not Gehazi. Uh, Elisha, uh, Elisha, when he, yeah, when he cast, they were like Elisha is just hot tempered. I was uh, like, Elisha's from the story, <laughs> yeah, from the story of the bears, we can understand. But from this story, uh, I was like, wow, I had never looked at it that way, and I was like, wow. And yeah. one of the challenges, again, because again, from Patmaro, we get leaders who come for the training. They were like, if we were asked and we were honest with ourselves and what happens in the world, how many of us will actually be the Gehazi? Because maybe we will say, if we prayed for someone and they got well, or they got their breakthrough, they got their healing, but we'll be somehow tempted to say, why don't you bring a goat as a seed to the church? Yeah. And then again, we'll start having the wrong doctrine because people will be thinking because the pastor prayed for me, then this is supposed to happen. And they were like, this story helps them to see how it's a very thin line to just become a Gehazi and not realize that you are one of them. No, their words will bear fruit, and their fruit, it's the action that will be seen. But at the end of the it all, everything that we do, what's the motive of, of the why we are doing it? Are we doing it so that we can uh, put ourselves on a high pedestal that we did it, or it's God who is sitting on this pedestal and we are pointing everyone to Christ? Because I was like, uh, we might get to heaven and your crown really has nothing on it only one or two because everything you did you did for self-gain it wasn't for the kingdom with that there was an aha moment of like what i do with the people of god even when we point them to salvation after they have accepted christ we looked at hebrews 10 25 do not forsake the gathering of the saints because you need to keep it there because you can't grow alone Phase one teaching, call it one degree off or call it cat and dog theology, is really helping the people not only grow in their faith, but listen to what else is happening. And he said when they started sharing and doing discipleship through phase one, many people have actually gotten saved and accepted the Lord as their Lord and Savior in the villages that they have been doing discipleship. Even only after phase one, where we do emphasize the need to multiply, to make disciples, Nemo's first generation of disciples are already getting their own 
disciples. It was so exciting. He's been going around sharing what he learned in phase one. From that came mm -hmm. 17 people who committed their lives to the Lord. No, more than that. For for committing lives to the Lord, they have been more than that. For what, for the specifically the ones he has been discipling is 17. Overall, they had people from seven different churches, which is really spreading the vision of God's glory in that area. Believe it or not, one pastor walked 20 miles to get there and 20 miles back every day, every day to get to those meetings. There is such hunger there for the truth, and they can sense that it's truth, what's being taught. She also really challenged them to work together in twos, just as Jesus sent them out two by two, and I love how she did it. So we had a kind of different analogy of the broken telephone when one person is the one who is sharing the message that is supposed to go to everyone around the village. And by the time the first person started, when we got to the end, they had said something different. But when we tried it with two people sharing the message together, by the time it got to the last person, they shared the same message. So I was like, when we, two people know the same thing and they go two by two by two by two, that way, even discipleship is easier and we are able to repeat the same thing that we had uh, to ourselves and we can hear and correct each other at that point instead of sharing information that is not right. I love how she pointed out that discipleship is so much more effective for a pastor than doing it by themselves. And it gave the pastors an aha moment. And then we also had the discipleship where we did the analogy for David when if it's only the pastor who is teaching and wants to get through to everybody, he'll take a longer amount of time. But if he has raised people around him where he can delegate some of the responsibility, even when they uh, sharing the message of God, it's easier and it gets quickly spread to many people in a much shorter time, and you are able to even gain more people to come to church, to the kingdom, even as we do evangelism, even as we do the teaching, the Bible study, and all that. So the pastors were like, aha, so I don't need to do everything by myself. I love how she is teaching them to study God's word by looking at the individual characters. Um, did Titus, um, when he came to the first one, was he clueless? Was he in the old, kind of the old way of thinking? Yeah, because he said, uh, I always thought that I'm the only one who knows the word of God. But when we share the stories and really look at the characters, instead of looking at the word of God from outside, but looking at these characters and thinking, could I be this character? Could I be this other character? Or what other characteristics that are showing up in how I lead my life, how I lead the church and all that. How is it affecting the things I do? And is it to self or do I point people to God? So now that is when we started asking them, are you a cat or are you a dog? At the end of it all, is it me, 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 me? Or do we say we, us, and how can we do it together as a community? Now I've said this before, but I will say it again. The question is not, are you making disciples? But are you making disciples who are making disciples? Listen to what is happening in Kenya as we teach this. The 17, are they starting to get their, their own small groups? Are they starting to look for their own Timothy? Yes, yeah, yeah. They also have their own small groups. Really? How many, of the seven, how many of the 17 have small groups? Seven. Wow. Yeah, because he told me uh, by the time we finish phase one, by the time we have done, now when we went back, there are pastors, there is one pastor who he has raised and he continues to disciple that he wants to send him actually to open a church at a different interior village. So for me, that was a plus. That's incredible, Nemo. I love how flexible her team was and how they worked around the problems. We never really understood because like right now, when we went with the team, I was like, whoa, uh, because we got stuck the first day and then we were, I quickly was thinking, how do we go back and not just let the, the training say that we can't go back because we got stuck. 
And just having a team that is flexible and also has a hunger to just go and share the word of God. For me, it was incredible because when we said the second day when we called Pastor Titus and we were like, can we have motorbikes that we can fuel from the church and then they can come and carry us from the main road inside the village and take us back in the evening? And he was like, yeah. So just the flexibility that people want to go out of their comfort zone and to go preach the gospel for me it takes the heart of god because not everybody will do that <laughs> so how long of a ride was it from the main road to the village on a, on the motorbike uh about 35 minutes and okay. remember the, there are no roads yeah. so it's bumpy <laughs> through rivers and all these things but we were happy that we did it and everybody was happy. Although our funds are very low this year, this was a fantastic return on our investment. When I hear of Titus going out and getting 17 others and the seven of those getting their own studies and trying to raise their own youth. And mm -hmm. I, I see it's, it's working, it's, it's multiplying, it's what it's supposed to do. So mm -hmm. very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, we are, our funds are very short this year. Uh, mm -hmm. We did not have the, the people who had their inheritance, who tithed on their inheritance that brought in the extra $60,000 that did a lot of what you and David did last year. Mm -hmm. So we just got to be, I, I just want to be sure we're being wise in how we use our money. Uh, mm -hmm. But this sounds wonderful. It sounds like a great mm -hmm. uh, return on the investment. It seems like God is using it, blessing it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very thankful for that. Overall, I see God smiling big time with what is happening through Nemo and this church. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your prayers, for your finances. Disciples are making disciples. Lives are being changed. The glory of God is becoming primary in the lives of so many people out in the bush of Kenya. Glory to God. Thank you.